Tonight, the dramatization of a story by Jerry Soule, The Seventh Order. Brentwood, Illinois, would have been just about like any other average community of 10,000 had it not been for Presser College, one of the country's finest small institutions of learning. Its residents were used to the pranks, the hazings, and the practical jokes of the students. But even Professor Ansel Tomlin was surprised when the blue humanoid came down the street and up to the porch where the professor was sitting in an old wicker rocking chair. Of course. You are Professor Ansel Tomlin. Yes, and you, I take it, are somebody from one of my psychology classes, dressed up as a sort of a robot. No. I am George of Xanthar. Who? I am here to learn all I possibly can learn of the planet Earth and its inhabitants. Less than ten minutes ago, I landed not far from here in a spaceship, which I subsequently blew up and destroyed. Uh, now, let me explain. I am Tomlin of Brentwood. Less than ten minutes ago, I was sitting on my porch peacefully marking exam papers. I intend to resume right now. Helen, would you get the phone? It is your wife's sister calling with reference to the explosion of my spaceship. Sure it is. She merely wants to ascertain that your family was not affected. Listen, George, be a good fellow and... Oh, my... Well, don't be alarmed, dear. It's a fraternity initiation or something. Oh, well, it does look like the real thing. Oh, did you know there was an explosion outside of town? Uh, An explosion? Yes, blast of undetermined origin is what they said on the radio. Oh? My sister just called. She heard about it in the local station and wanted to make sure we were all right. I see. Well, I have something in the oven. My goodness, that's a wonderful costume. Her sister lives 20 miles away. How did you know she'd call? My mind circuits are telepathic. They pick up all conscious thoughts a distance of some 200 miles. It couldn't be you arranged the whole thing, that it wasn't really her sister. How did you get here? Who or what are you? I am a machine, the finest, most complicated machine ever made. I have a rather unique history, too. Who made you? Ages ago, on Xanthar, there was a race of humans. They made the first robots. Rather crude affairs. We classed them as first-order robots. They are still used for menial tasks to some extent. And... What order are you? The highest, naturally. A seventh order robot. Or rather, a humanoid. We are the first in which there is not an automatic, no harm to humans cut off. I begin to see. You will become aware of the fact that I am superior to you and to the rest of your race. I need no oxygen. I am never ill. I need no sleep. Every experience is indelibly recorded on circuits and is instantly available. Tell me, George. Do you have feelings? I have an electronically controlled endocrine balance. Hmm. That's very interesting. And what is your mission here on Earth? For the moment, I am here to study. I will live with you until it is complete. You will what? I will live with you. I will be with you all of your waking hours. While you sleep, I will go through your library. I need nothing. I want nothing. Now, just a moment. What about my privacy? When you desire privacy, I will study someone else. Your wife, perhaps. Mm. The female should be interested. George, old man, I'm terribly sorry, but you'll have to wire back to your masters to make other arrangements. That will be quite impossible. Really? You see, I have no master. Well, what about those humans back in Xantha, the ones who invented you seventh-order humanoids? Oh, they are all quite dead. We destroyed them. Destroyed? You look alarmed. It was, after all, they or us. You see, our endocrine system permits us pride in ourselves. Naturally, being proud of ourselves... We objected to being ordered about in an incompetent way. So... So, you killed them. Exactly. Now, shall we go inside and inform your wife of my visit? Suppose I refuse. Professor, do you see that small dog playing on the lawn across the street? Yes. I will lift my arm and point at it. Observe. It vaporized. Exactly. Now then, shall we go in? Yes, we'll go in. Oh, there you are. 
Mm. I see you've brought your friend. Uh, Helen, uh, this is George, George of Xanthar. George is a machine. <laughs> well, anybody can see that. It's the most convincing costume I ever saw. Helen, it isn't a costume. No? No, he's really a machine. Oh. He's staying with us. What? Whether we like it or not. Well, really, Anne. We have no choice. I am a seventh order humanoid. I detect that your mind does not comprehend. I am here as an advanced scout for my race. After we establish a station here on Earth... I, I, I don't like this. Now, would you be kind enough to leave my house, young man? You are very slow to comprehend. I comprehend that I have a lot to do, and I'd appreciate it if you leave. Otherwise, I'm going to call the police. You may call anyone you choose, Mrs. Thomas. I'll have you arrested. I assure you I can detect your intention long before you have time to do me any harm. Well, we'll just see about this. Hello? Get me the police. Helen, it's useless. I can follow the call through the phone wire. Captain Townsend will answer. Captain Townsend? Captain, I want to report a, a robot. A what? A thing. It, it won't leave my house. Uh, who is this? Uh, I'm Mrs. Tomlin, Professor Ansel Tomlin's wife, 44 mm. Crescent Road. I'll send the car over. Now we'll see. <laughs> Uh, is this the character that's been giving you trouble? Yes, this is the one, officer. I talked to you before about ruining the flower bed, Sonny. This time I'm taking you in. I would advise you not to touch me. I cannot risk any damage. Well, see about that. Come on outside. I prefer to remain here until I complete my mission. You do, huh? You know what this is? It is a weapon you call a service revolver. That's right. And you'll either march out of here or I'll use it on you. That would be most unfortunate. All right, come on. Uh, officer, let me warn you. He's march. dangerous. March now. I'll count to three. Officer, please. One, One uh, two. Uh, I regret it, but he was actually going to pull the trigger, only to frighten me. But I cannot risk damage. He might have miscalculated and struck me with a bullet. Ansel, I'm frightened. Mm. There is no need for fear. You have only to accept the fact that the Seventh Order is coming to operate the planet for your benefit. Ansel. Helen, there's no use trying to do anything just yet. Now go next door to Mrs. Coleman. Tell her what's happened. I'll talk to George. Oh, but I uh, don't... Please, Helen. Well, all right. Do you really think that you, uh, a single robot, can conquer the Earth and make its people do your bidding? I can. Uh, suppose it were demonstrated to you that you could not, that, uh, that you could be destroyed. If that were so, I would naturally report that this planet is unfit for development by the Seventh Order. Well, you know they'll have you taken into custody for killing the officer. I cannot permit it. There will be needless slaughter. Unless you can convince your people it is useless to attack you. Mm. Will you let me try? I have no desire to prevent you. Go ahead. I detect that you are going to call the newspapers and the local television station and hold a press conference. Yes. I also detect that you have a plan to overcome me. Oh? I like that. Really? Yes. You see, in order to test this planet for development, I must know whether any of you are truly dangerous to us. You are a superior type of man, Professor. I welcome any plan to conquer me. That you care to attempt. Okay, George. At least we know where we stand. I'll phone the newspapers. Uh, quiet! Quiet, please! Now, quiet! Hold it down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Henry Bennett, broadcasting from a sound truck parked in front of the home of Professor Ansel Tomlin in Brentwood, Illinois. At the moment, Professor Tomlin is seated on his front porch. Next to him is a strange-looking blue robot-type creature, also seated on a chair. At the moment, we don't know if this is a hoax or not, but Professor Tomlin, a highly respected man here at the university, has called a press conference to introduce what is supposedly a creature from another planet. Professor Tomlin is about to speak, and we'll try to catch his words. Uh, uh, quiet, quietly. 
Uh, gentlemen, I uh, wish to present to you George of Zanzar. Oh, wait yes. Now, 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 just a moment. George, George is a machine. Probably the most dangerous machine ever invented. He is telepathic as well. He can read your thoughts like a book. He knows exactly what each of you is thinking at this very instant. Oh, 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 professor. Yes? Do you expect us to swallow this nonsense? Yeah. Not yeah. without proof, gentlemen. Uh, can George do his stuff for us? Uh, let him tell me what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> you are thinking about a blonde young woman named Laura, with whom you will attend a show tonight. <laughs> Come on. Well? Well, he happens to be right, but uh, well, we've seen mind readers before. Uh, let him do something else. Now, I did not call you gentlemen here for a demonstration of magic. I called you here in the hopes that a good deal of needless bloodshed might be avoided. Less than half an hour ago, I watched this creature completely vaporize a policeman who was trying to arrest him. I expect that the authorities will be here any minute. I hope I can convince you and them that it is futile. Either you're nuts or you think we are. Uh, I don't believe this machine killed a cop. If a cop was killed, a human did it trying to blame it on the machine. Now, now gentlemen, gentlemen, I, I don't know how I can prove it. Oh, perhaps if George will demonstrate his ability to vaporize... Observe uh... the oak tree in the front yard. Now. Hey. Now, do you see? I see, but I don't believe it. Uh, boys, this is some kind of mass hypnotism. Uh, maybe the tree was rigged up in advance. I swear to this you... This that... George of Zether is all he's cracked up to be. Let's see what he does when I toss a rock at now, him. Don't be a fool. Here goes, George! Stop him! I warned you. I tried to warn you. Okay, everybody stand back. Stand back. Charlie, get that automatic rifle set up. Check, Chief. Professor, I advise you to step away from that kid. Captain, for your own sake, don't try anything. Step away, Professor. Very well, but I warn you. Okay, now don't fire till I'm ready, boys. Right. Now then, George, what's this? We don't know what, uh... Who's inside? That's tin suit, but I'm giving you just ten seconds to come out. Of Captain, it. I... Hey, you're one on suspicion of murder. Now, come out. All right, boys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid we'll have to terminate our broadcast. What started out as a good-natured hoax or publicity stunt has turned into a bloody massacre as the bodies of some six policemen on the lawn of Professor Tomlin's home will attest. I don't know exactly what is happening here, but I can say this. George of Xanthar is no hoax. He or it is the spearhead of a race from outer space that's come to conquer the Earth. Have they all gone, Helen? Yes, where is he? In the library, reading. Are the policemen still outside the house? Mm, they're walking up and down. Oh, I hope they don't... Yeah, they have orders not to try to harm him. Ansel? Yes? What are we going to do? I don't know. Oh, listen. He's coming. Mm. Professor, uh, Mrs. Tomlin, I have decided to walk through your town to learn more about its buildings and people. And kill a few more humans? Killing humans affords me no pleasure whatsoever. I kill only when damage to myself is possible. I hope that no one will attempt to harm me. Uh, George, uh, let me warn you now that this affair has gone beyond the confines of this town. I am well aware of that, Professor. I am aware of a phone call being made this instant by your mayor to the commander of the Illinois State Guard. If you're smart, you'll return to your ship and your planet. My ship is destroyed. I could instruct you to build a new one, of course. But as I have no intention of leaving... Then you will be destroyed. No. I will destroy first. Uh, have you no conscience? A conscience is a fifth-order failing. Needless baggage. Good evening. Hello, Professor Thomas. Yes. Yes, yes, I will. Who was it? The mayor and the chief of police have called a meeting of the citizens of Brentwood at the college gymnasium tonight. Ansel, you're not going. I must. But no, Helen, you... 
There's much more at stake here than my life or yours. Civilization itself depends upon our standing up to this machine. I'm going to the meeting. Gentlemen, uh, Mayor Brentwood, I, I call this meeting to order. As you know, there is loose in our city a being with one purpose to prepare it for conquest by similar beings. I think Professor Tomlin can tell us most about this being. <coughs> well, if uh, we could determine the source of George's power, he might be overcome. He is obviously vulnerable to force, such as a speeding bullet if it hit the right spot. However, he has the ability to read intent long before the commission of an act. He is probably listening to me now, even though he may be far away. I think Now, Mr. Mayor, why not track him down and all attack at once? Some of us would probably die, but he couldn't strike us all dead at once. Oh, it's bombing! Gentlemen, gentlemen, this humanoid is able to keep track of several hundred things simultaneously. As a matter of fact... Gentlemen. You are working yourselves up new. You simply do not appreciate what it would mean to dedicate yourselves to the fulfillment of the Seventh Order destiny. Your lives will be made most pleasant and happy by us. Yeah, why did you kill six cops? If they're so powerful, bring them back to life. How do you want to be buried, Rob? Yeah, let's get them, man. And eyewitnesses report that in the end, when all were gone, George of Xanthar stood alone on the platform of the gymnasium. There was no movement except the twitching of the dead and those trampled by the crowd. Among the survivors was Professor Ansel Tomlin, who originally... Well, <clears throat> that's that. What next? I don't know, Helen. I don't know. Oh, hmm. well, well, what's that? It sounds like an air raid alert. That's peculiar. They didn't announce it. Turn on the radio. Hurry. We interrupt to bring you a special message. All residents of Brentwood are advised to go to their basements or convenient bomb shelters. The governor has announced that units of the National Guard have managed to corner the robot George of Xanthar in the town square. Oh. Tanks and mortars will be used in an attempt to destroy the creature. Again... Go to your nearest bomb shelter. Oh, did you hear Ooh, They'll never be able to destroy him. Well, where are you going? Up to the roof. To the roof? I can see the square from there. Well, I'm coming with well, you. Just as you like. What's happening? He's vaporizing every tank and gun they bring up. Oh, Ansel, let's get away from here. What's that? Those are army jets. Uh, we'll see how effective he is now. Oh. Oh, good Lord, a whole squadron up in smoke. It's no use. Can't you see? It's no use. Ansel, come inside, please. Oh, very well. Oh, if only there was something we could do to tell Not him. as long as he can read our every conscious thought before we can act. What is it? Our every conscious thought. I wonder... What is it, Anson? Uh, nothing, Helen. And the army reports that the countryside around Brentwood is deathly still. The blue humanoid, George of Xanthar, is still standing in the middle of the town square where he's been standing for three days now. We'll keep you informed of developments. The military urges everyone to keep calm and go about your business as usual. There is no danger to anyone who is not attacking the humanoid. No danger. What's to keep more of them from landing? Ansel, are you going to sit there with your head in your hands forever? Mm. Well, come have some dinner. Mm. Ansel? Mm. Yeah, it might work. Going. Uh, Washington. What? I'm going to Washington. Would you be good enough to pack my overnight bag? I can catch a plane out of Chicago in about two hours. But why? What, what for? I'm going to talk to the Pentagon. What do you tell them? I'm going to tell them to surrender to George of Xanthar. Our 
our microphones are here at the edge of the town square in Brentwood, Illinois today, ladies and gentlemen, to witness the most unusual spectacle of modern history. A discussion of terms whereby the United States of America may surrender to the humanoid George of Santar for the occasion an honor guard of 22 servicemen from all branches and all parts of the country has been chosen in just a moment. The honor guard will accompany General of the Army's Walter Pitt, who will discuss the surrender. The honor guard is advancing to the edge of the square. The robot is standing there now, carefully eyeing the soldiers. Every ounce of his concentration seems to be going into it. Actually, we're told his telepathic circuits are probing their minds for some hint of danger. A thought, a flicker of an eyelash, may be sufficient for him to vaporize all of them. General Pitt is about to speak. George of Zanta. I hear you, General. I have been instructed to consult with you about your intentions toward our country and the world in general with a view to reaching some sort of agreement with you and others of your kind who you say will invade the earth. May I approach? One moment. I perceive no intent to harm you. There is one man among your soldiers, however, who has an illogical thought. Will the soldier who is thinking the thought, 11 o'clock, step closer? Do as he says. Does 11 o'clock mean anything to you, soldier? No, sir. It's running through my mind, but it don't mean a thing to me. My examination of your thoughts tells me you speak the truth. Very well. We will proceed with the talk. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a tense moment. The general and the humanoid are discussing terms. The soldier who has questioned about the thought, 11 o'clock, has stepped back into the ranks and is holding his rifle at attention like the others. I perceive it's now 10.59 a.m. If there is any significance to the thought about which the soldier was questioned, we'll know in one minute. We of Xanthar, gentlemen, would not want to improve a planet which could not be educated and would continually oppose our program. Therefore, I am glad to see your willingness to discuss after my message goes out, there will be a landing party on Earth within a few days. While waiting for the party, however, there are certain preparations. Just uh, list them for us. Your government will naturally have to turn over complete authority to us. Afterward, we will utilize your press and radio to disseminate our instructions to your people. Simultaneously in other nations, the same procedure will be carried out by our rep. Ladies and gentlemen, it's happened at exactly 11 a.m. Ten soldiers in the honor guard instantaneously fired their weapons into George of Xanthar. Apparently, explosive bullets have blown him to smithereens. The remains are lying scattered all over the square. People are pouring in, kissing each other, shouting. Wonderful, really wonderful. Oh. I'm sorry I couldn't come home sooner. It uh, would have spoiled my whole plan if I got within telepathic range. Your plan? Yes. Well, but what? How? Uh, what? Just a matter of simple psychology. Uh, those men in the honor guard. What about them? Did you know any of them? Not exactly, but I did have the job of hypnotizing ten of them. Hypnotized? That's right. You see, each of those men was hypnotized. And while he was under, we planted a post-hypnotic suggestion, namely, to fire at George of Xanthar when a soldier named Charlie started to cough. Charlie was told to cough at 11 o'clock. Before we released them from hypnosis, we told them to erase everything from their conscious memories. I was staking everything in the hope that George could only tune in on the conscious mind, not the subconscious, and it worked. <laughs> oh. yeah, there was nothing to be reached by George's prying mind, so we never knew what was going to happen. 
At 11 o'clock, the soldier named Charlie coughed. The men raised their guns and fired. And that was the end of George of Xantha. Now, if you don't mind, I've got some exam papers to mark. On a planet many millions of miles away, a red light, one of many on a giant control board, suddenly winked out. A blue humanoid made an entry in a large book, System 29578. Planet 3 inhabited. Too dangerous for any kind of development. 